Yeah. Yeah. Come let me teach you a lesson. Come let me teach you a lesson. Level line with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest. Level line with the podcast. Teach you lesson cause I got class. Level line with the impact. You be lying, that's a real fact. Come let me teach you a lesson. Come let me teach you a lesson. Level line with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest. Welcome to the Label Lion Show, the biggest marketing, entrepreneurship, and mindset show on the African continent. Today's guest, guys, is as phenomenal as all the other women who've come. And you know what's special about her is that she is so committed to serving her community and being excellent at such a young age. Whenever I look at her page, whenever I engage with her content, it just reminds me that anything is possible you shouldn't let anything hold you back and your age is definitely not something that should be a barrier to you accessing anything trying anything or being who you want to be Luyanda hi Luyanda Zuma <laughs> welcome to the Level Line show Jebole, thank you so much for having me I'm super excited thank you for being on the show I've been wanting to have a proper sit down with you for a very long time because you've been doing lives, you've been doing a lot of things. Right? And it was like, <laughs> now we need to formalize, you know, make it gazen gazen. Thank you so make much. Make it nice. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the show today. I think what you bring to this conversation that we're having on the show overall, mm. you know, is a younger voice. Oh. You know, you are literally living through what some of us were living through six years ago, seven mm. years ago, you know. So the experience could be different. And there are lots of women who follow you and me who mm. need that voice, who need to see somebody who's actually doing what we say we did. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? So I'm really excited to have you here. And as you know, Mrs. Research, because we had <laughs> research before she came on the show. So as you know... Think about me. <laughs> we always, always prepared. Oh, you Guys, always prepared. I'm overly prepared. She honestly is. And that's the most impressive thing about Leanda. <laughs> In all of her lives, everything, she's prepared. She will know her guests inside out. She knows everything. So it's like... You can't surprise her. <laughs> but anyway, who is Luyanda Duma? Well, my name is Luyanda Duma. I am born and bred in Durban. I'm a 24-year-old, very passionate about developing young talent. Um, I'm an HR professional. Uh, I, start, I did my undergrad at UJ in industrial psychology, and then I went on to further my studies by doing a BCom Honours in Human Resources, um, which is very much unconventional because I, as somebody as young as myself is not... Um, the normal face that you see in HR but I'm very passionate and I love human resources I'm passionate about developing young people and just um, more about what I do on a daily basis I one motivate I inspire good morning everybody happy Monday Mm -hmm. (laughs) many people know me through that but I'm HR enthusiast as well as a speaker I do quite a bit of influential work as well and yeah I think in a nutshell that's who I am I'm a lover of life I love fashion I love modeling um, and just meeting new people and engaging with people. I mean, honestly, because I know you, this is like, yes, this is Luanda, <laughs> right? We, we know how incredible you are. And at such a young age, how did you know that HR, of all things, would be your thing? And for people who don't know, HR is human resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did I know? I actually didn't know Label because, funny enough, um, as cliche as it may sound, HR found me because when I applied to study at UJ, initially I wanted to study something in crime. Um, simply crime. because I used to watch a lot of NCSI. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, I was going to do something in pathology, okay, and that didn't happen. But when I got the opportunity to come and choose a second choice, I remember saying on the call with um, the people at, at, at academics to say, what is available? They're like, okay, we've got a number of opportunities. I was like, okay, give me the hardest course and I'll just do that for the year and then branch into do whatever I want to do in the next year. So they were like, okay, it's a BCom Industrial Psychology. I was like, okay, I don't know what that is as long as I'm in Joburg because I think the point was to leave KZN and, and come to Joburg because, you know, growing up, we've always known Johannesburg to be, you know, the city of possibilities and I knew that that was the place for me. So I came and I studied Industrial Psychology. First um, class that I attended was Industrial Psychology as a module. And when I walked in there, as the lecturer started speaking, I knew I was in the right place. And from there, Mm. I didn't look back. I think um, with HR being one of my majors, it was one of my highest um, scoring um, modules as well. So I decided to branch into that. 
And I think with HR for me, it's not as it's not the high end fire that people know it to be, but it's more about developing people and ensuring that there's a goal that a company would want to reach. These are people that have certain values, talents, um, and competencies. And really what my job is to bridge the two to make sure we have a win-win situation, mm -hmm. right? So I was very passionate about that. And I think many professionals, and I think also everything that we do favors the organization, right? And I thought, well, this is my opportunity now to rewrite the narrative of HR because people know HR to be that unreliable person in the organization that somehow is supposed to be your mother mentor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, I want to be there for young people because I can imagine how daunting it is to walk into an organization well established, well old in terms of systems and be expected to perform. Mm, that is profound. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go into HR a little bit just now, mm. but I want to know what it was like for you when you just arrived to Joburg, fresh from KZN, fast city, here you are. <laughs> Tell us about that experience for all these young girls who are watching who are saying, I want to go to Joburg too mm. and study and I want to break out of where I am and be in the city of lights and gold. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. I think for me, it was quite fun. Um, it was very fun in the sense that I was able to realize all you know, my wildest dreams. I still am, I feel like I am still living within that space and operating in that space. And it's something that I'm forever grateful for. But I must say, Lebo, there are certain skills and habits that you need to have or be mm -hmm. instilled mm -hmm. for you to survive. Amen. Because it's a city of, when I say gold, it, it's gold, yeah. you know? And you're going to be presented with gold, but you need to, if you know what you want, and you're grounded in your values, you will understand that sometimes, you know, the goal that you want may come at you with no experience, with no work, no hard work, no effort, no sweat. But if you understand the process and the long term, if you're like playing the long term game, you'll understand when and how those things are going to be afforded or awarded to you. So I think for me, knowing that when I came here, I wanted to pursue an edu educational qualification. And there are certain things that I wanted to achieve outside of that. Knowing that goal, having that goal, having, you know, and living, you know, within the teachings of my parents, as well as myself, because as much as you grow up under your parents' roof, you follow certain guidelines and rules, right? But when you begin to leave that, you kind of have to develop your own kind of rules and, and values to live by. So I those were very clear for me. I knew very well what I wanted to do. Distractions came, yes, varsity is extremely fun, but I knew that I needed to balance. And I think striking that balance at a very young age allowed me to, I guess, grow at the pace that I grew at because I was able to say no at things that I knew were not what I needed or wanted at that moment, as attractive and flashy that it may have been, but yeah so i think knowing that and being able to say no knowing who you are mm -hmm. and and understanding that it's a long-term game nothing comes easy you know mm -hmm. nothing comes easy and it's something that you need to remind yourself as well because i think as a young woman um we get people that want to give us all these things and all sugar did yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have these amazing <laughs> gift you financially uh with the resources Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. What I'm saying. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that know exactly what you want. And I think once that is clear for you, everything that is not aligned with that, um, if it's presented to you, you'll be able to say no. I like what you're saying. And I feel like you're giving us an overview of what should be in your heart mm. and your mind when you come to Joburg. But now I want, I want you to give us practical steps. So I am 18, mm. just about to go to UJ or Wits or even UCT, wherever. What are the three things I need to do practically mm. so that I can survive varsity? I think number one, guys, if you can, I highly recommend residences. Guys, stay in res. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend residences. I wasn't a fan um, of communes and off-campus um, you know accommodations and I but obviously those things are, are beyond our control mm -hmm. so I say because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a planner and I, I, I want that for everyone. So if you know you're in grade 11 or grade 10 and, you know, obviously you're going to get to the point where you need to start applying for your, you know, um, 
tertiary, tertiary institution, do that in time so that you are able to secure a space in res. I think for me, the one thing that kept me grounded was res and res culture. I know now that it could be quite controversial because many people experience, you know, um, some sort of abuse in residences. Really? But yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when it comes to culture, the things that we as first years needed to do mm, um, to kind of earn your place, yes. right? So I think, you know, if it's not harsh, there's something that teaches you about life, about yourself, and about being able to work within boundaries and being able to, to operate within certain guidelines. And I think that's the one thing that as a young person in a big, beautiful as equally bad city is what you need. So being in race is very good, especially for academics as well, because there's study time, there's rust and blast. There are just rules that you need to follow. You learn how to live with people because when you're first year, you share. I think that's a very good skill and necessary skill that you need to learn as a young person because it kind of takes away the sense of entitlement. You are also then are open to learning about the different worlds that other people come from. And that's where the empathy builds, right? Um, being able to know how privileged you actually are without realizing because you often complain at home and you want you know, um, these huge amounts of money. But when you meet uh, another person from another city or another hometown and they'll tell you about their life experiences, that kind of shapes who you are. So you kind of get out of that bubble, which is something that you need to. So I think practically one, if you can stay in a race, then stay there and participate be active do what you must um and just you know open yourself up to learn secondly have i think have have i don't want to say a mentor because i don't want to scare people away to often think that they need to look for a label or a luyanda mm. but identify somebody in third year or second year that is going to help you you know within your academic journey because i think at that very moment that's exactly what is important and that is what is priority so have somebody that you can look up to have somebody that is going to hold your hand um, and be part of study groups and i think also in varsity lastly uh, participate be part of you know volunteer go to join src join the the cultural group because having and knowing all those people that you meet during those encounters will help you build relationships the same people that you work with um a student advisory or academic or wherever you at the library wherever you are volunteering um are people that are going to help you build and people that are going to help you know be the next stepping stone to your career outside right mm -hmm. so building those relationships and and you know having that and solidifying yourself in those spaces helps you greatly i've always been that girl who raises her hand right mm -hmm. so i did sports in varsity in varsity i did sports cultural stuff I, there's nothing that i didn't do and that has helped me become the woman that i am today i love that you know i actually didn't think about how being in race helps you with your interpersonal skills mm -hmm. and building empathy. It does. You know? You're absolutely right. I <laughs> never ever thought about it. Does. That. That's brilliant. I go back my leg and I and I think also, like I said, living in a bubble is extremely dangerous because you think and you want the world to rub around you and you think your problems are the main thing. Mm -hmm. But just understanding that people equally have challenges and equally go through certain things and that also knowing that you are not alone because sometimes you are in your bubble thinking that nobody can help me and people can't relate to my story but there are so many people with stories that could help empower you and I think if you open up yourself to those things mm -hmm. then oh, it's going to be such an amazing experience and I think I feel bad for my 2000 now because they like I want to stay alone I want to live off campus my mm -hmm. sister lives off campus guys in a very fancy place and I'm just like yeah, Pena Vele, you know, because uh, that's the standard now. But I would have loved for that's her to extend it. It is. She's looking like someone with a job. That's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I, I guess. Okay. It can say Yeah. But I would have loved for her to have that experience. And when I talk about race culture, I used to call at home and cry, obviously, and be like, oh, they're making us do this. Mom, we have to sleep at this time. Mm. I can't. And you know, there's actually, what's it, the first couple of weeks, you can't visit home. You need to be enraged. And I used to like cry and be like, I want to come back. I hate this place. And I think from her experience hearing that over the phone, she was like, mark me absent, ma'am. But I think when I look back now, I'm like, the person that I am was grounded really by those mm. experiences. Yes. Um, I think you're speaking about something so important about sticking through the hard times, mm. actually going through them and understanding that they're grooming you for something 
bigger. Yeah, and you being know? a child. Exactly. When you're meant to be a child. Be a child. <laughs> be a child when you're meant to be a child. 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 And be a child. <laughs> Embrace <laughs> it because this cat is so cool. I'm a Yeah. I woke up cute. It's not easy. Mm. It's not easy. So, okay, you're at UJ, you're studying this thing, you're happy. I remember watching one of your lives and you spoke about failing. Mm. Take us through that because you seem like somebody who was a high achiever. So like your whole life, you, you meet you meet the criteria, you do the things, then varsity comes, you're having fun, you're doing the right things, and then boom. That was failing. such a rude awakening for me, mm. you know? Um, but I also know and understand why it was so necessary because I didn't end up in the corporate space where I work a nine to five. Mm. I'm more of like a freelancer. I do my own thing. And... I, I have to deal with no's on a daily basis, right? Mm. And I think if I hadn't gone through that, um, this space now would be so harsh on me and I'd probably crumble and not be able to live at my highest self. So when I was in varsity, guys, I've always been a high achiever. Like, I've always been somebody that works hard. I don't think I'm smart, but I do. I, I play my part. I meet God halfway. She's like smart too, but... <laughs> I mean, no, but I meet God halfway, right? And I think um, you need to also be a hard worker because yes. on some instances, being smart doesn't mean that you're good at everything, yes. but you can be the best at what you do at that very moment. Mm. So I, I used to get good grades. I was quite active, um, you know, in sports and cultural stuff. at raised, and I think in third year, saying it in the guys, saying she looks okay, get great the next year, you know? I came across this module that was extremely difficult for me, no matter what I did. Like, mm. literally, no matter what I did, because I went to tutorials, I used to visit people at their own residences to help me with this, you know, um, guys, business management. I need to drag the course because, wow. wow. That's one of the best courses. I was actually a tutor for business management. Oh, my, she's always <laughs> going. <laughs> always going. You know? You a better time. <laughs> So I struggled with business management one a, one a even. Are you serious? In that year, one a because <laughs> wow. I was only doing it for for just one year. Okay. So I struggled with it and I failed the module. Mm. And at that point, that failure meant that my degree had to hold off until. And luckily, it was a first semester model module, so I was able to do it the next year during first semester and then have the opportunity to graduate. Mm. But because I was so fixated on the idea of graduating at twenty whatever and doing everything um at a certain age and i think also it was just something that i i guess had pulled in from society which also is quite toxic guys you can graduate at whatever age it makes no difference your degree doesn't have delayed or denied or 10 years later you know it doesn't have all those things and i think the minute you allow yourself to do things at your own pace and at your own competency and academic capability, then you are able to, to enjoy it better with less pressure. So for me, it was quite difficult failing at the last stage. And I think also I was quite a, a role model, you know, within my residence. And I thought, oh, my word, what am I saying to the young girls that are coming after me? What am I saying to the people that are watching me? But also I, I, I then began to understand that as somebody that God uses um, for other young people to look at, surely there is a lesson that I need to learn. And I think when that happened, I cried about it, but then I had to be a boss once again. But I think what was more amazing was what happened within that six months. Because had I graduated, I probably would have looked for a job, worked a nine to five. But because I had that six months, I was now introduced to myself, another version of myself that was now going to be the woman that was going to walk out of that academic institution and become right so that's when i started doing you know freelance work and i, I wouldn't even with my got that degree or <laughs> got to finish degree yeah. i was like yo let me come into your organization let me help you with contracts because i had so much of time i was forced to think and you know and because i used to attend i think once or twice uh, a week um, for only like an hour or so. I had so much time. And I also think I felt bad that my parents were paying full on um, accommodation where I was staying. And I wasn't really in varsity, yeah, you know. Exactly. So I had to I had to start making a living. I thought to myself, let me utilize my time. But most importantly, let me be quite intentional with the fact that 
I want to walk out of this six months. Masing begin move and get good. Okay, I was able to do A, B, and C. I achieved A, B, and C. So I easily forgave myself. But I think moral of the story: failure is necessary and it's inevitable. Whether you are the smartest person in the room, whether you're the most hardworking person in the room, when it's not for you um, and when a goal is delayed, um, it doesn't mean that it's denied. That is just an opportunity for God to sometimes redirect your path, to redirect your steps, because that's not exactly. And sometimes it teaches us certain lessons. So it's different for everyone. So when you encounter failure, it's so important to look within yourself and kind of do that introspection and then also go back to the drawing board. Yes, cry, it's embarrassing, it's whatever. But I think for me now, I experience, I, I embrace failure more because I understand that there's something great and powerful coming because of this failure. I mean, bars. <laughs> you, you're actually spitting so much knowledge and I like what you said because I also mm. failed a module in first year. And I lost my mind. Like I cried <laughs> for. It felt like I cried it's for. Horrible. I it's horrible. It's really horrible. No one's gonna want to employ me. <laughs> my life is. I literally, guys, I was the biggest drama queen. I cried about that thing, and I literally <laughs> didn't know where to go or what mm. to do. You know. So it's so important for us to have those conversations about like modeling failure. There yeah. is actually a good way to fail. Yeah. And by that I mean, um, you could either be depressed forever, and you know, just whittle away in the corner, give up, mm. or do what you did. Yeah. Say, what can I do with this time that I've been given, you know? And what you did was also so profound. Say, yeah. I'm going to go find things to do. Mm. I'm going to go consult. I'm qualified because I want to be there, not because I actually have the mm. qualification right now. And that's profound. So where did you go? Where was the first place you went where they let you in? So, um, <laughs> this is actually quite <laughs> Because this is how then I knew of you and I was introduced to your work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I then went, uh, a huge shout out to these two gentlemen. And I think I will forever, ever, ever, ever uh, mention them and give, you know, thanks to them. Because I think, you know, in that space, because I was still this hyperproductive person within mm. Varsity, I was already like positioning myself on social media with the likes of the ladies that I now get to sit and have conversations with, right? So I was following these powerful ladies. Um, I was still attending a lot of you know, events of empowerment and you know, everything. I used to literally sign up for everything and attend, right? So um, there were these two gentlemen. One was in Varsity with me. Um, they started a, an accounting firm, okay. which was quite crazy because, see, now in life, I see it's this failure now, but here you are in oh. Santon starting an entire firm as, you know, black men, which is predominantly a very white and big corporate um, space, right? So when they started doing that, they had quite a bit of, you know, clients as well where they were offering these bookkeeping services. And I remember having the conversation with one of them saying, I'm very frustrated. I've got this time on my hands that I don't know what to do with. And they are the ones who are like, actually, we have clients on our on our business that we consult for. Maybe we can start offering these services to them. And if they buy into it, and then we'll obviously, you'll give us your price, we'll mark up, and then we'll offer those services. So they pitched it. They told me, okay, write down all your services that you're going to offer us, put it on paper, and send it to us on email. And I literally did that. I started, you know, I first did my research in terms of what are small business needs when it comes to human resources, lack of contracts, lack of systems and procedures in terms of um, policies, right? So I drafted all these things that I, I had not done mm -hmm. ever in my life. Yes. yes <laughs> but Google is your best friend. Google is your best friend. <laughs> Google is, is your, your best, best friend. friend. I'm going to make this like a meme and oh, put it on Twitter because people... <laughs> People don't understand. Google is your best friend. Is your the best answer friend. is Google. The answer is Google. <laughs> so I literally did that and I offered the services to them. Um, and then literally, guys, in a few months, I was consulting for big brands, mm. like very big brands that were assigned under their, their company. And I remember this one time. I can't remember if it was a financial institution that hosted some seminar in... It's not Alex. Oh, I know. It was a financial institution. Yes. yes it was. So yeah. we then started attending all those things. Mm -hmm. And I started, you know, being exposed to women like yourself. And I mm -hmm. thought, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Like, you know. <laughs> so I started doing that. And I used to travel a lot with the organization. Um, I was the only female 
yeah i was the only female but because i was so hungry to learn i wanted to be everywhere even when they went to go consult about the you know the financial stuff i wanted to be there i wanted to sit in the meetings because i knew that one day this would have been me where i have to pitch to a client and you know get them to trust me with their organizations right so i exposed myself to all of that and then literally in less than a year um i got a job because one of the clients um that I was servicing then became my employer and that's how then my career kick started about to and that was just amazing. You know, like there's so many cool things you're talking about here. <laughs> Firstly, curiosity, research, having a teachable spirit, being a self starter mm. and I, I wanna put this the right way, but what you've done is you've shown people that you can build a life that sustains you, that pays for your bills, yes. that does everything by working for other African people. Yeah. It's not we always can. I leave varsity, I go work for an American company or a European company. Mm. I can work for a South African company and still thrive and learn a lot. And you know, Lebo, I love that you mentioned those skills. Please write them down. Like you need to write down those <laughs> skills. My people know, no, we write. <laughs> when I speak, we write, yes. right? Um, please write that down because we are living in a world where Unemployment is very high. Mm -hmm. um, organizational structures are very lean, mm -hmm. right? So companies are paying Just for value. Just explain what lean is for people who might not understand. So guys, this was the structure before. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, in, within HR, I can have a talent management, a talent manager, I can have a vibe manager, I can have a culture manager, I can have HR admin, I can have, you know? Mm -hmm. But now because there's no budget, there's only, we, the department goes from having 30 people to two, yeah. they can do the entire job. Mm -hmm. So when we say lean, they're coming, becoming smaller, right? In, in, instead of adding more people, we're increasing the scope of work for less number of people, right? Skills requirements, right? salaries. Yes, that's exactly, <laughs> what <working it>. hours. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So we are operating in a space like that. It's very hard to kickstart your career in organi when organizations are actually letting go of people and you want to go in right so because that is the current system those skills allow you to start working even without being in an organization that is well known or known to be big or if you work for that organization you are the it person right so i don't want young people to strive to work for certain organization yes but if it doesn't happen I, it, it mustn't get to a point where you are now applying and you get rejected and you think like your whole life is going to waste. Mm -hmm. Do what I did. Consult. If you are a lawyer, go offer your legal services to small businesses. We make a lot of mistakes in small businesses that take us to CCMA, to labor courts. So, And this could be your opportunity to offer those services. You studied PR, but you know that a lot of, um, you know, print media is no longer available and now everything is digital, then go to an organization that finds itself in the media or is positioned in the media to say, hey, can I be a freelance PR person for yourself? So these are the skills that now you need to put forward for you to thrive. Mm. I wish like, I could just have like a <laughs> horn or something and then you could chat and say, all Lana. the young people in SA could hear you. <laughs> because what you're talking about is, that's the recipe. Mm. There isn't a magic potion that anyone drinks. You're not more special than mm. anybody else. You just decided to go for what you want and then you actually did it the right way. Mm. You know, it wasn't about you being special or you being on social media. Definitely not. Or anything like that. So it's interesting because when I speak to a lot of young people, they make it seem like, oh, but Luganda would have it because, you know, she's got however many followers and she's pretty and tall. So mm. everyone gives her things. You know, but it's it's not that. It's not the case. I think for me, my numbers are really um, young people that are hungry to learn mm -hmm. and want to know the recipe, the prayer, or whatever it is that yes. we call it now. And I, I and I think it really it's not it, everything that I do now or the opportunities that I have now are not because of those numbers. Trust me, it's because I did the work then. Mm -hmm. I failed then. I think everything that I'm getting now was because I was faithful to the process back in varsity right so it's not a matter of oh because she's tall or because she you know she knows who and who even how i knew those people was because of these skills because of my passion for what i do mm -hmm. and like i said and i always read this quote that says that 
like if you like just focus on what you do somebody's going to see it focus on what you do and make sure you do it well so I think that's one thing that I do. I I never not focus on my work. Mm. You know, there are days when obviously I don't feel as motivated, where I feel like oh I'm failing, I'm not doing as much as I could be doing or whatever. But I I I, I bounce back from those situations and I then go back to working. And I think if you are faithful to the work, your work will take you places where nothing else will. Thank you. Your work will take you places where Thinking nothing else will. Thinking as four seven, I mean mela seven, yes. yes. Like kumela seven, there's like. You don't just get here and have an, an entire show simply mm-hmm. because you are tall, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's just additional stuff. That's work. <laughs> but you worked. Yeah. You know, you worked. I want us to zone into this HR conversation a little bit more because I know people are saying, yes. they're taking their notes. The community <laughs> takes notes. I want to, I've just finished varsity. Now I want to get, get a job or approach Theo Baloy or whoever, mm. right? What do I do? How do I do that? Do I send a CV? Do I create a, a profile on LinkedIn? What do I do? Actually, you can create a profile on LinkedIn and then call Leo up to help you with your profile <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> call Leo to help you. Um, but that's a lovely question. And the beauty now is that your CV or your resume or your profile could be your social media page, right? Mm. So if you're more of a creative person and you showcase what you what you do through visuals, through videos, um, and and so forth. You can do that because I think when you land on my page, you know exactly what what's coming your way. Like you know what's in it. So positioning yourself, I, I think on other platforms as well, based on what you do, one is very very important. Mm-hmm. Have your resume. I strongly, I'm for unsolicited emails which is when there's no job opening you literally just send that profile or send that email to hr or whoever is it or an info account because i know when you go on google you find a lot of info um emails right so i love unsolicited um, unsolicited emails because many organizations never also know when they need a certain position or a skill until you make them realize mm. so half the people that i've recruited were people that literally approached that particular organization and said, hey, this is what I do. I don't know the level at which your company's at, but when you need A, B, and C, please call me. This is my stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I keep those with the database because I understand and I study the growth of the business. So I know in six months' time what kind of positions we will be looking for within that particular space, right? So sometimes we keep it for the database and we do contact people, but sometimes when that comes in, you're like, Actually, I didn't know we needed this. Mm-hmm. Let me now take that and motivate for budget to either the CEO, the GM, or ops, whoever you know I need to report to. So it's very, very, you know, also important to shoot your shot. Mm-hmm. Like people do it on Twitter and land jobs. Yep. Right. All the time. They do it on Twitter to land jobs. But your resume, your profile, those are things that need to be up to date at any point because you never know when you'll meet a Theo at Starbucks or in Santon or a label, wherever. Mm. So having those and knowing the kind of value, and it's one thing to have it on paper, great, but understand your value. Because if you get an opportunity to have a conversation with this person, then you want to make sure they know what you do and how well you're going to do it. Mm. I love that. The conversation about value. Mm. And that's a big word right now. Know your value, value proposition. We all do things to create value. <laughs> what is value? That's all marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that sounded like marketing. <laughs> but what, what is value for the layman, mm. the person who doesn't understand what are you value? What what are you saying? A value, like return on investment. What do I pay you for at the end of the month? Mm-hmm. Right? And the thing is that it, it sometimes value is not tangible. It's not something that you can see right now. Value could be a shift in an organizational culture because of whoever's managing that culture. Value really is what do you have to offer the business or the person or the brand that they can pay for in return, right? So it doesn't have to be tangible in the sense that we're buying from a shop a product. It's like paying for a service. Mm. That's the value add that that particular person. So as an HR practitioner or professional, if I walk into an organization to train and develop their staff, my value will see in the performance of the people. 
right so it may not be visible in the sense that sometimes if you're a graphic designer or a producer you see it through a piece of work mm -hmm. right so you need to make sure that and i think it's such a, a big thing but you need to know what it looks like for you specifically mm -hmm. and in your industry because I think it's different for everyone. I mean, it's different for people that are working with numbers, that are working as accountants. Um, for influencers, value is different, right? And, and you know, for people that are in corporates, it's different. So you need to understand it for yourself. And this is a conversation that you can have with your line manager if you have someone to say that organizations pay for value. What kind of value is derived or is expected from this position? But also, Google. <laughs> Google, Google, Google. <laughs> so, you know, the, the cool thing about your journey is that you've leveraged on networks, right? So you've done the work, but then you also leverage on networks. And one thing you're not afraid of is contacting people. Mm. Like, the first time you DM me, I'm like, yeah, Who's this little girl? Okay, this person. <laughs> you know, but the way you did it was just so, it was so cool. I was like, okay, let me, let me be open. Let's, right? let's connect, you know? And... I think in the world that we're living in now, and you were even saying that like, mm. young people want to live in their own apartments and fancy places, we're highly influenced by social media, mm. and we're not aware of how impressionable we are as young people. Let's talk about social media. Mm. How should I, as a young person, be using my social media? What, what is the truth of it? Is it a, a valuable tool, or should I just delete if I want to live a successful life? I think only you can answer that for yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you want what do you want social media to be for you, right? Is it just an entertainment tool? Because if it is, then follow whoever and consume whatever. But from a psychology perspective, what you consume does influence your thoughts and behavior, mm -hmm. then in return, your actions. Right? That's just something that you can't change, right? But also if you want social media to be a job then you need to be more intentional about it. Then that's when you will look at people that are operating in the same space, whether it be influencer, content creator, offering a service, how do they position themselves within that space. So you kind of need to decide what is social media for you. For me, I know social media is just a platform where I get to reach a lot of people so people can have access to the information that I think is very, very important for them to consume so that they can become the best versions of themselves in whatever spaces or businesses that they are operating in, right? So you need to decide for yourself, Guti, what is social media? So if you are like myself and you're using it as a tool that I'm using it in, I'm very particular now, okay, about one, who I follow, what I consume, why I consume it, right? So once you know why you're using it and what you want it to become, every other thing, okay, there are other questions that you need to ask yourself for you to position it in that way. So for me... Not really entertainment has per se because I think also the people that I follow are quite entertaining mm -hmm. um, within their spaces of work because I follow you as well for work, but I get some nice Saturday content, I get nice outfits, I get hair inspo, you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. So be very mindful of the reason why, and your why is what you're gonna get. So don't be shocked when you now start having an appetite for certain things mm -hmm. when you are using it for the, for, for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. right? And I think once we are all honest about the reasons why we use social media, um, then it's, it's quite better because for some people, it's really entertainment and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Luanda Duma, deeply rooted in She Who Dreams. Mm -hmm. Anyone who knows you will literally <laughs> say She Who Dreams. dreams. <laughs> Tell us about She Who Dreams and anything that comes out of She mm -hmm. Who Dreams. So she who dreams is my alter ego, funny enough, you know, I think, um, and this is a word that I really just, I didn't stumble, but I created, I know it's a sentence, but I created just that phrase for myself when I was in varsity, and um, I used to study and write a lot, I'm a writer, I think hence why also I, you know, um, retail planners and, you know, merchandise that allows you to be productive because I've always been that person that writes things down. So I remember um, I used to describe myself because I used to, you know, always prepare for Miss South Africa. When I <laughs> enter Miss South Africa, when they say 
tell us who you are. You needed that one catchy line, and you know. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, I'm quite a dreamer. So how do I then, you know, make that sound nice, you know? And I think I remember stumbling on Pinterest. I, I love Pinterest for inspo. Me too. Right? I love, I love, I love Pinterest. It. And I was on Pinterest, and I, I my Pinterest is filled with, okay, now it changes every now and again. <laughs> my feed changes every now and again. You know what it is now, but then... Yeah. Quite a lot of motivation, um, like now as well. But I don't know how I started getting these phrases in other languages, right? So these phrases would come with like weird looking symbols, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. I remember seeing this one that stood out and I Googled, right? And it said Al Reeve. So I thought, what is that, right? So I'm like, let me Google mm-hmm. again, Google. Mm-hmm. And um, Google said Dreamer. So I was like, well, that's me. God, is this you? So then I ran with that and I, saw, I literally wrote that everywhere. On every bio, on my WhatsApp, I just said Al Reeve. And I, I started getting a lot of people asking me, what does that mean? What does that mean? Then I was like, okay, let me just translate it. She who dreams. And I thought, what a fitting line or phrase for who I am, right? And the woman that I believe myself to be, right? So that's how that word came about. And I think I've kind of used it throughout, you know, growing up. And now that I had the opportunity to now, um, you know, create my own productivity merchandise, I thought this one is for the dreamers, right? Mm. This one is for the dreamers. And I don't want it to be, it mustn't be questionable. Like, you must just know from the get-go. And I think that's why I use the exact same word because I say to myself, I want to create merchandise and tools that are going to help women achieve their dreams, right? And achieving your dreams, you don't need, you know, certain things, but there are certain habits that take you there. And those are the things that I felt what were very important, the habit of planning like the skill of planning, the skill of consistency, those are the things that make you achieve everything that you want to achieve. So I kind of make, um, you know, merchandise that helps cultivate those skills. So many people won't get it because they'll understand, they'll say, oh, why are you selling to-do lists? Why are you selling? But when you use those things, you don't understand what you're doing subconsciously mm-hmm. and the habit that you're building, which are very necessary to take you to wherever you want to go. I, I love that, you know, <laughs> and you invited me to the launch yes. of uh, She Who Dreams, and it's actually really beautiful, guys, mm. you should check it out, link in your bio, try it out, it really does work, writing things mm. down, planning things, being consistent, which is probably the hardest thing to do, Yeah, especially as you adult and you're intentional about what you want to create. That's very and true. And I just want to zero in on that concept of expanding your offering as somebody who creates online or somebody mm. who is an influencer. Because a lot of people are just taking pictures, maybe sometimes they'll work with a brand, mm. but they don't own their property, mm. right? And in you creating She Who Dreams, you started to take ownership of yeah. the community. Let's talk about that, the importance of that. I think for me, it was quite, it wasn't intentional in terms of ownership, but it came as a result of just me realizing my dream and creating this product for women to realize their own. Mm. But I think now that you mention it, it's quite an important thing because as young women, and as I think as women in general in, in South Africa or in the world rather, we haven't been given access to have these things or to own certain things or to occupy certain spaces to say and be who we are today. Mm. So I think the more I see of it, the more excited it gives me because, um, and I think it's something that you mentioned when we started the conversation, um, was that representation is so important, right? Um, and sometimes you stumble across a Luanda in the label and you look at them now and you think, oh my word, not realizing that there was Luanda in varsity, there was label in varsity that failed, right? Mm-hmm. But also I think the more conversations we have about that and the more we inspire ownership in women and inspire taking ownership of your career being in those spaces where previously we weren't allowed to be in having it all because as women i'm currently wrestling with that concept of having it all right Mm -hmm. and i'm embracing it i'm basking in it because i'm like yes i deserve to have it all and i think as hyper productive women and women that work so hard you can't have it all right it's either you have the family or the career right and if you want everything it's just like there's no room for everything but now i understand that it's okay for us to have it all and i think 
once we as women start to unlearn the fact that we weren't supposed to own certain things or have a sense of ownership of being in certain rooms and make certain decisions and start learning that you can and you must and you will, then it becomes so much easier. And I can imagine the, you know, the many businesses that will come to fruition the minute that women decide to say, actually, I am worthy and actually I can and I will do A, B and C. What's it like being often the only woman in the room in spaces that matter? Nerve wracking, <laughs> first and all, first and foremost, and th- these are the feelings that we never speak about. Mm-hmm. Because as nervous as I am, I'm going to occupy space. I'm going to take up space. I'm going to make sure that I I raise my hand. I'm going to use my voice, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make sure that I'm heard. Right. But I think for me, when I walk into spaces like that, they make me cringe mm-hmm. because I actually just want to be like, before we start, can I just open the door? And a couple more women to come in exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know and being the person that i am because i think sometimes i i believe that i walk into rooms and i'm in spaces to represent one to show whoever's watching that hey it's possible you can too but also then to open it up for other people and that's something that i do without even thinking about it so in a situation like that i'll do what i need to do make sure that they know who i am but also then again the next time i walk in there let there be room for a label and another luanda mm-hmm. and Mbali or whoever else there is right and i think that's why i'm so pro woman because once women are developed and once women realize that they have a voice and they have a story and the world needs their magic, then my job is done because when they become themselves, whoever's watching in her audience then also sees representation and it's a ripple effect and all of a sudden women are just blooming. Absolutely. <laughs> you actually reminded me of one of my favorite quotes mm. uh, by Maya Angelou and she says, I come as one yes, but I stand as 10,000. I will never ever not be about yes, that. You know? uh, that's it exactly what it is. captures <laughs> what we're both about, I think. Mm. You know, just that idea. It's not rah, rah, women empowerment. It's more, we need the diversity mm. rooms. We need the different voices and we can be proponents of that change. Mm. You're trying to be, I'm um, actually, we are I doing, t- yeah, we are, are doing, <laughs> I am doing, as a woman we know are doing and it's incredible. Can I put you on the spot a bit? I oh know my you. goodness. I know you asking me questions. Interview take over. <laughs> <laughs> but what are your thoughts on, you are a very hyperproductive woman. Yeah. Career woman. You've got it all. Um, but what are your ideas on women having it all? Career, finances, you know, business, family. What's your take on that? Thanks for inviting me to the Luanda Duma show. Yes! <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> uh, but my thoughts on women having it all is, I think it's, it's tricky, you mm. know, because when I was 24, I was like, no, women are going to have it all. Men must go sit in a corner and we must take over. Like, I was very passionate yeah. about that, you know. <laughs> then the older I got, the more I realized that you can't effect change with anger or force. Mm. You have to always enter environments with love, mm. empathy, e. and patience if you want to see a meaningful mm. change. But also, you can't change how people think and how they see the world. Mm. All you can do is be whatever you are and hope that people they will into see. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. The fact that I tweet about marketing is not even a thing in this country. Mm. But people are coming to me who were never even interested because I just decided to sit in that. Mm. Sit in that truth. Just be like, this is what I'm going to talk about. Sorry if you don't like it. She's not scared to be controversial. She's so not scared. And I'm just like, I wish. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't even know it was controversy Mm. because to me it's just thinking. So I'm right, like, you I'm see, myself, this is I'm the beauty thinking. of it. So the fact that it's controversial, I'm like, okay, that's fine for you, but for me, it's just a thought. There's always um, two sides of the there's story. There's always two sides of the Love story. It. So I think women having it all in a patriarchal society, in a society that's still learning how to embrace all diversity, not just mm. women, but like any kind of difference, um, is challenging and it can be very draining for you as the woman Mm. if you're going to try and fight everything at one time Mm. so you need to pick your battle and i think the the battle for men can't do this or women should be here i think that one is a bit of a waste of time yeah so i think what hasn't been happening in the past which is happening now is women get to be seen Mm. 
And it's the visibility that influences the change more than it is about us directly saying, oh, the patriarchy must fall. It's more mm-hmm. about like, let's just, wherever you are, create. And lean into that crea- creation mm-hmm. until it gets to a point where people say, okay, Lebo, who else do you want to bring in the room? Mm-hmm. You know, because it was exhausting right? for me. It was so exhausting. I got And tired. they are the ones that are going to ask you, exactly. can you recommend can you another? Exactly. And he- so just <laughs> create and just bask in that process. Don't worry about the patriarchy. It will change because you are there. Just mm. simply because you are there, you know. And if you want to have it all, sure. But I know personally, I don't like my plate full of food. Mm. I like certain things. Ooh. So I, because I am that person, I'm selective. Mm. And I like what I like and it's not everything. Mm. So I guess women can have what they want. But I don't think women can have everything mm. because why would you want to? Mm. You know, I love like, that. That's the point. Be yourself so you can have everything you want. You want, personally. Um, but you won't always. You won't want everything. Nobody wants everything. <laughs> you know. Is this how we um, sound? When we answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't think. I mean, you can have anything you want to have. Um, but I wouldn't be about women can have it all. I don't think anybody mm. has it all. And if they do, what a burden. You have all that you want. You, you can know, have all you can that have you all want. All that you want, but yeah, not love all. It. That's. No, <laughs> <laughs> not appetizing. It's not appetizing. <laughs> you know, I'm on my plate. I like a couple of things. I like space in between those things. You know, you can even you can design the life that you want, and I think maybe that's, that's what people mean when they say yes. You can design the life that you want. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Is, are we done with the? No, you can take back. Take you, back. Do you have one more back question? Because <laughs> it's fun. I, I'm liking this. Show. I'm enjoying it, bro. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's let's talk about fun things. I think yes, we're both in you know corporate spaces. We talk about business, very serious, blah blah blah. But what people don't understand is that we're still people. Yeah. Right? So you have a social life. I you, do. You have hobbies. <laughs> let's talk about the importance of hobbies and tell us about a few of your hobbies and just your social life. Mm. I love my social life. I prioritize my social life. Mm-hmm. I bask in my social life. I make sure that when the opportunity comes where I can be social, I make the most of it. I've got friends that I enjoy spending time with. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time with my family as well. Um, they form a great part of my social life. They keep me sane. And I think, you know, life is really all about balance. Like, do what makes you happy. And I love that you mentioned that you can have all that you want specifically. So you need to make time for the things that you love and want to see in your life um, I'm a fitness fanatic as well so I spend a lot of time in there and if I can if I'm not too busy I make sure that I go to the gym because I understand that that makes me feel um, somehow and it allows me to be productive right so um, in my spare time I like dressing up. Mm-hmm. I like going out to have lunch at cute spots. I I, I love. I I've just now found a new obsession, which is Thai massages. So okay. if I can get an hour in a week, <laughs> I'll sneak in a Thai massage, um, which I think is quite therapeutic. Um, but yeah, I think more than anything, I'm such a, anyone that knows me knows that I'm a fun person. Mm. Like I'm very fun, and I think. It's the young person in me that as much as I may do things that may seem outside of my age, I still don't run away from the fact that I'm a 24-year-old. So you'll find me wherever 24-year-olds are yeah. uh, doing what 24-year-olds are doing. Mm. And I really do enjoy that. But I, I'm able to strike a balance. But I don't think I'm very strict on myself um, you know, when it comes to those things because you'll find that people have this thing of or society rather will say that if you want to become a hyperproductive woman like myself there are certain things that you can't do there are certain spaces and places that you can't go to i don't believe in that because really being in a vicinity or a certain space does not take away from how i create or who i am and what my core beliefs are um but behavior i guess does play a huge role when you are in those spaces and you know what you do you know how you need to act we're all adults Mm -hmm. i think so there isn't that thing of telling you how to act or show up but be whoever you want to be do what you want to do um but i I also moderation is very important Mm -hmm. in 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 you doing that and balancing right great i think i want to end this off with one last question and it's 
it's a question that even in the marketing space we we talk about this a lot but mm. obviously would be from a campaign perspective <clears throat> how we create comms the kind of language we use okay and whenever young people dm me they'll say oh but Lebu, i come from rural vendor i can't speak english mm. like this um i don't have these xyz things i have an accent um mm. and dark skin like people really feel like those are impediments like yeah, if i sound like this, this and i look like this they or i went to the school then this company won't take me mm. you're in hr tell us do are these things impediments are corporates biased towards people with certain accents or uh certain backgrounds the companies that i've been i've had the pleasure to service definitely not mm. definitely not i think what's more important is are you the person that we are looking for in terms of competency, skill? Um, I, and another thing is that I think as an HR professional, I don't really focus on things that we can work on, mm-hmm. right? There are certain things that we can train. Like if you feel like, you know, um, you can't or you don't sound the same as other people, you can always go for communication, you know, speaking, coaching, whatever the case may be. Do but they also, sound the same they don't. That are, that's also another point to say that mm. they actually don't need to sound the same. And I think I've had the pleasure of being in spaces that fully embrace people as they are. Mm. And I o- often ask myself, was, if I had to go speak English in China, <laughs> will I sound? <laughs> will I not sound? Will it make sense? Yeah. <laughs> so can we stop holding people to? what we used to or a certain standard I yeah it's a standard I I don't believe in that Mm -hmm. I think if you can communicate your points across and the people that need to hear what you have to say hear it um, I I, I don't think it matters what what other people think and the funny thing is that those things don't matter when it's important Mm -hmm. so when people speak about whatever they speak about know that it does not matter where it matters there are people that you guys deem not to speak the way that they should be speaking, but they are signing deals, yes. honey. So they what is the money, honey? You know. So <laughs> what is the point of us dwelling on on those things? You yes. know. So where, like where it matters, I know for a fact that that doesn't count. It's not even a factor. I love that. Leave us with some advice. The person who's watching, the young girl at home, the person who's just started their job, someone who's a professional or has a small business mm. and they want some advice from Brianna, what would you leave them with? Yesterday, Lebo was my sister's birthday and I had the honor of emceeing the whole thing. And she made it so purposeful because she anchored the whole the whole day or the entire luncheon with the scripture Psalms 1 verse 3, where it speaks about that we are, we are like plants, planted in Eden, right? All bearing fruits. Um, and that you know basically what i'm going to paraphrase read it psalms 1 verse 3 but basically what it speaks about is that god created us um to bear fruit right and you often wonder because people will often ask themselves why does luanda achieve what she does why does Lib- why is Lib- the woman that she is and often think that you know god is in our neighborhood and not in theirs that god favors certain people and not but god created us all to bear fruits right which means that it's already within us right it's already within you and and you know and it speaks about how god's intention as this fruit that is planted is not for you not for your leaves to grow off or fall off but the whole purpose of you being planted in eden is for you to blossom right so we are made in christ's image right which means that we already possess we we already have the fruits within us and that god does not design us to not succeed in our very nature we are to blossom Mm -hmm. but also then it's up to you to accept that assignment and to receive and live within that right so i never want anyone to question themselves or to look at women and and certain women and think that well damn they more oh was that a Good language for the show. Ah, you could do, you can say whatever oh, you want. Well, damn. It's a podcast. <laughs> well, <laughs> damn. Um, you know, certain women have it and certain people don't. We all have it. That's just one. And it's really then up to you as an individual. Mm. Right? When you see people prospering, it means that they've decided to do something about that which they've been given. Mm-hmm. Right? And you 
being wherever you are doesn't mean that you don't have it within yourself. So first and foremost, identify that there is something there. There are fruits there and God wants you to blossom. And the next is then to have that hard conversation of what could be my, what, what, are my fruits right mm-hmm. my fruits could be within the space of hr in speaking and in influencing and in being impactful your fruits are definitely in marketing and everywhere else right so you need to identify those fruits for yourself and understand that you know you are going to blossom at some point in your life but also staying true to the journey because i don't think that, i i know that we all want to achieve and become something but that doesn't happen overnight right and i and i love the fact that You know, a lot of young people are going to see this. I hope they will, because we are like, we are more of a popcorn generation. We, okay, I saw a label like this. I want to be label tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I want to wake up and be (laughs) like label tomorrow. (laughs) Understanding that you need to be faithful to the process, right? And there's nothing that beats knowing yourself, right? And understanding what it is that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Everything else gets you will align yourself. You know what you want, you will align yourself in the industry with the people in the spaces and the kind wherever and everything else will just somehow fall into place. That's beautiful. Like if I had to summarize that, it would be bloom how you are designed. Yeah. In the time that you are designed to bloom. And your design does not have to look like ours. That's it, the beauty it of it. It doesn't have to. It's your design, your DNA. Mm. Only one of you. Thank you so much for gracing us with your beautiful presence and wealth of knowledge on the Liberal Lion Show. I think you're changing people's lives with what you're doing, you know, and we need more people like you. And I hope that anyone who's watching this is going to go straight to your social media platforms and like watch your life, <laughs> everything that you have, because if they're feeling lost in Joburg, yep. feeling lost in their careers, your page is literally the compass. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. It was so amazing. <laughs> Guys, thank, thank you, you for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share with your friends, comment, you know, I'll always respond. And we'll see you next time on another episode of The Label Lion Show. Listen, because I got cash. Label Lion with the impact. You be lying, that's a real fact. Come, let me teach you a lesson. Come, let me teach you a lesson. Label Lion with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest.